one of the most important things about being able to use Drosophila as an experimental organism is that you're able to use a hundred years of work on an organism. So people have been studying this as a genetic tool for over a century. The good part about that is that that means that thousands of investigators have identified and created thousands of lines which are each different, each with their own specific set of mutations or their own specific set of rearranged chromosomes that are available for your use. The bad thing about that is that there's only one way to keep those lines, and that's by perpetually transferring them every two weeks, vial to vial. So if you want to keep a line of Drosophila 25 to 26 times a year, you have to transfer that vial of fruit flies into a fresh vial so you can get progeny from it two weeks later. That doesn't sound so bad. It's 30 seconds or 60 seconds. But if you maintain, as we do, thousands of stocks, imagine having to transfer 1,000 or 1,500 stocks every two weeks in order to maintain these lines. It's difficult, it's time-consuming, it's repetitive, and it requires absolute attention to detail. Because oftentimes, the things that make that line unique, the thing that make that line specific, aren't visible to the naked eye. And so you need to make sure that the line you carry over from this generation to the next generation is in fact the right one and not the vial that was sitting next to it in the big tray of vials. That's a very, very difficult and painstaking job when you ask a person to do it. But when you can turn that job over to a robot, a robot that's able to do quality control by checking barcoded labels before it picks up a vial, checking the barcode on the empty vial before it picks up the empty vial, going ahead, doing the transfer, moving flies by bursts of air from the old vial into the new vial, doing that under conditions where it's very unlikely that you're going to get volunteers who just join your vial by accident and thus contaminate your precious stock. It then recaps those vials, again, checks the barcode to make sure that the right transfer was made, and goes ahead and repeats that for the next stock, the next stock, and so on, being able to do approximately 100 stocks an hour. So if you, in fact, have to maintain, as we do, 1,000 to 1,500 lines, well, that's 10 to 15 hours of robot time, but it really might take a human being several days a week to do that. This enables us to keep these lines. And just to give you some idea, we have mutants in this lab that existed at the time of the very first set of Drosophila experiments. So we have lines that are 100 years old. Some of the lines we use most frequently were created almost 50 years ago. And the reason we're able to use them is because of the fact that they have been so carefully and painstakingly been maintained. We want to be able to make sure that the lines we create now are equally good and equally useful six months from now, a year from now for our usage, five, ten years from now for the next generation of postdocs and graduate students in this lab, and maybe even 10, 20, 30 years down the line for our colleagues and for the people who leave this lab to create their own lab, which means keeping them clean and uncontaminated, and the robot does that really, really well.